When Dave Garraway left the Today program after a run of almost 10 years, the man to fill the chair was John Chancellor, then and now one of NBC News' most distinguished journalists. And his colleague, Edwin Newman, shared the duties as the newsmen. They are both with us, with us right now for our celebration. Welcome back, gentlemen. Let me ask you first, John, following Dave Garraway. Tough act. What were your thoughts? <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, that was one of my thoughts. I couldn't believe that we were on at that hour. Um, it was a very difficult um, act to follow, and I'm not sure that I was really able to fill those shoes, which I learned to be about size 18. Uh, Dave was one of the most magnificent communicators I had ever known, and I suppose some of us learned, and I think maybe Edwin did too from David, and from Jack Lascouli to be a little easier on television. I think most of us were very solemn and when we were doing the news. And I loosened up a lot when I was on the Today Show, and I think Ed did too. The program you did was a different kind of program. Infinitely. We were worried about nuclear war, bomb shelters, as well as some of the lighter things, which I've been, I've, they've threatened me by showing some of the lighter things that we've done. Gentlemen sitting to my right not only threaten somebody, but throw them off the air at one point. <laughs> your, your interview with Georgie Jessel um, has become a classic. Um, the interview ended rather abruptly. You yes. want to tell us about it? Yes, it did. Well, it was unfortunate, and I, uh, Jessel's gone now. I certainly don't want to pick on him, but uh, he was, as it seemed to me, being slanderous referring to the New York Times, as I recall, as Providence and the Washington Post as his vestia, and it was not a very, shall we say, coherent interview anyway. And uh, uh, so I told him I didn't want to hear any more from him, possibly a television first. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I remember turning to Joe Garagiola, who was on with me that morning, and saying, Joe, let's go to a commercial. And Joe said, they'll never pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> and, but before Jessel left the studio, he said to Joe and me, I want to give you my public speaking course. It was a remark I never quite figured out. I didn't know whether it was meant as criticism or... It's meant to get you thrown off the air. You also did another memorable interview with yourself about oh. Strictly Speaking. Well... It was funny. Yeah, well, I, I'm glad to hear it. Uh, well, I, I had a book out, a book that, uh, on, on the state of the English language, and the then producer of the show, Stuart Schulberg, the late Stuart Schulberg, I uh, was wrestling with the question of who was worthy of the task of interviewing me. And J. Fred Muggs was gone. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the answer he came up with was that the only possible person to interview me was indeed me. So, And uh, there's a picture of a split-screen picture of me mm -hmm. holding up the book. And on the other side, I am urging myself to hold up the book so that the, any viewers who want to get the name and rush off to the bookshops can do so. At least you weren't surprised by any of the answers. For which he was paid. Really? <laughs> yes. For, for operating for on both sides, Plugging right? his own book on the air, he was paid. There's a today first. It's not a bad idea. I'm going to talk to Freeman about that in a little bit. We're going to come back with a very special friend. But first, a happy birthday from the Blues Brothers. Boom, 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 boom. Happy birthday today, happy birthday today, happy birthday to the Today Show, happy birthday to you. 30 years of beautiful mornings on NBC. I like to feel that our reporters can go anywhere and cover any kind of story. Usually the story is of a serious nature. Sometimes the assignment is even a bit dangerous. But nothing stops our reporters. Last week, for example, we forced our staff writer, Barbara Walters, to go to Paris to cover the fashion openings. Now, today is the day that pictures of these clothes are released to the public, and we wanted to have them first. Barbara is with me right now to give us a filmed report. Would you tell me, was this a very trying experience for oh, you? Frank, it was awful. I mean, first of all, every day I had to go and look at fashion shows. Oh. And then I had to have lunch at Maxime's and drink champagne. Oh. And then I had to smell all the perfume at Dior. Oh. I mean, it was so trying that I took absolutely the very last plane I could to get back here today. Well, we welcome you back. And here's our staff writer, exactly 20 years later. I was so skinny. Barbara Walters. You're just like you were then. Maxime, Champagne, Dior. No, 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 oh. no. But you know, those were the days, really, with all due respects, that the women on the program primarily did the, you know, we did the fashion shows and, you know. And the cooking. And the cooking and the... And wallpaper. 
What were your feelings when you came back this morning? 30 years and the place is crowded with old friends. Very sweet, very teary, kind of sentimental. You know, now that you've talked about it being 20 years, I started as a writer when Dave Garraway was still here. I was the last person hired while David was still here. So there's nobody on this show I don't know. And not just the on-camera people. I mean, I look around at Straker, Bobby Armstrong, and Doug, and I could go through all the names. Bernie, I, I, all of you. I mean, I, Jim Straker saved your life but, uh, a lot. It's very sweet and <laughs> lovely to be back. Here. It's a wonderful show. So what happens when you say, well, how do you greet these people? How are you doing and what's new? Yeah, and then you say, how's the baby? And they say, the baby just graduated. Did you hear Florence Henderson? How's the baby? The baby just graduated. Summa cum laude. Ah! Well, your baby was born while you were on the show. Not on the show the baby wasn't born, but while you were on the show. <laughs> I should have done that. I, couldn't, yeah, I didn't think Well, I, I would have not been surprised. My baby, you was, I talked about it so much. It was such, I bored everybody with it. But, but my baby is now 13 years old and 5 foot 9. It says something about you that we didn't even have to introduce you, and I haven't Aren't introduced you, you yet. But in the next half hour, we'll be back with Barbara Walters and a lot of reminiscing. Now we will go to a new man, one of the few people you haven't worked with, Willard Scott. Well, that's my loss. I hope too soon. Now, here's a message, a special one from the Kiplinger Washington editors. You watch, and we will be back with more. If you don't have the time personally to research, read, and digest all the business material in today's complex, ever-changing scene, you need the Kiplinger Washington letter. It goes beyond the news every week. It provides perspective, adds judgment, and gives sound, down-to-earth guidance. Have your pen and paper ready to write down the Kiplinger address. Smart people who read the Kipling or Washington letter get clear. We are enjoying our sentimental Thank journey you. through 30 years of the Today program, but we're only halfway through it. Hope you are enjoying our birthday party. We've got a lot more to come, a lot of very interesting people to meet, a lot of old friends. Hugh Downs is going to be stopping by, Joe Garagiola, and of course we'll be talking more with this very special lady next to me, Barbara Walters. Why don't you take us off for the first hour? Yeah. Oh, please. Yeah. My big chance? This yes. is it. Station break, and then we'll be right back. Hey, you're the oh, bravo. 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 Bravo.